What's going on, you guys? This is the video of how to play our up and coming uh, TCG, which is Mythic TCG. And this is a game, a mini game to our uh, bigger game, which is Mythic Series. Now, um, this will have all of our characters in it, the community characters, everything like that. Uh, we built the game. Uh, we just recently just recently built it so we're in playtesting mode right now we're playtesting it so we're using the simulator just to see if it works if it's a good game and it's a really good game um it's really easy to get um just basically to get involved into it and everything like that so a lot of cards will be misspelled and um all over the place sometimes um due to the fact that um uh, you know we're still new we're still building things fixing the cards and all that stuff like that so what i'm gonna do is show you guys how to play um this game and uh, it's a very fun game um it's it, go, it got the very competitive aspect but it also has the party element to it as well too so um it has, so it follows our lore um we we wanted to change the whole style of the game and we have changed it so th these card backs right here even the way the field looks everything is object to change so don't think don't get too used to everything like here that you see here so first what you want to do you want to start a deck um you know, we might have it where you we, we're still thinking of the number. I'm thinking about like probably 100 cards or well, 60 to 100 cards. Um, you know, 60 or 100. We're thinking about that, but no limit on how many you want to add to your deck. Um, but we think 60 is a good number. You know, me personally, I can play a lot of cards in my deck. Uh, so uh, because of so many good cards, and the deck I built is called um, uh, Elemental Demons. So. They're basically uh, elemental spirits on the side of the game. There's an archetype, um, and they're actually a big lore inside of um, uh, the main game, uh, Mythic Series, and you guys will get to learn about that. We're also coming up with a bunch of stuff, like a manga, all this type of stuff like that, so you guys will just be so engaged into this IP that we're creating. Um, and the elemental spirits has a huge thing about it down in the story, so they play a huge role into the, the flood of, a, of a Braxis, which is the, basically like the main uh goddess inside of the story right so um so i'm playing with elementals uh demons so demons um is a deck that normally is ran by uh a trevor so you might see a, a leader card which is one of the characters inside the game is trevor trevor is also a community member inside of our uh, community uh and he's basically like an archon of amira and amira gave him the power of the sun fire and um, with the Sunfire, he was also um, given the ability to control the undead and the demons um, and demons. So um, I'm basically playing that deck. So it's not a fire deck, but it has a lot of burn when it comes to itself. <laughs> but it's very powerful. Um, and it, it basically just like steamrolls people. So um, and this this deck, I mean, this game is really inspired by Yu-Gi-Oh. This is where I come from. Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic the Gathering uh some, you know some digimon tcg so it got some a lot of aspects of those type of things buddy fight which is was no longer in business but it, that was they had like great mechanics in there um so the game is pretty fast but it also is pretty slow um like magic the gathering when it comes to like a resource system but we have a resource system called threat system um and threat level i mean well, threat level, threat system which by threat levels and how it works is you have a leader all leaders have um like they have their own abilities that work with the deck directly with the deck and leaders can attack they can only attack units they can't attack each other but they, they have um life so which is 20. not all leaders have the exact same um, life but some leaders have um, more, more life or some leaders may have lesser life due to their abilities or how strong they are they're attacking wise um so you just make sure you pay attention that way as, as we release more leaders so uh, he works really well with decks. So what Trevor does, what Trevor does is demon units um, that I control, uh, controls uh, against um, two, one, uh, for every one one's in a quick zone. So you have two quick zones, two defense zones. So defense left, defense right, which goes into some mechanics inside of the game. You know, sometimes say this card does this, this is in a quick zone left, quick zone right. So uh, if they're in the quick zones, which is right here, if demons are in here, they power he, he powered them up by 2-1, which is really incredible. And then every time that a demon, uh, every time a demon is killed, which killed and destroyed is two different things. Killed means killed in battle. Destroyed means just, you know, like affected, like a use of a card, which is a useless effect. Use of a card, um, it did something to them, like, you know, shot them, hit them with a fireball, lightning strike, some type of thing like that. So remember that, very important to remember. 
kill means killed in battle and then destroy means um just you know destroy when it comes to like card effect okay um remove means either one so if it, been, if it says if this card was removed from the field that means either it was killed or it was um, destroyed so it doesn't matter but you know gotta remember so if they're killed in battle um then you discard a card and then you add a amin ra a card with amin ra in his name so you see it's, it's missing, missing some words but this was supposed to say a card with, uh, from amin ra in the hand and then it has a build for a level of uh, two or lower. So let's go and just go look at the threat levels. So I'm going to add each color with each one. We're still coming up with car bags, so don't worry about it. But we're still trying to figure out how our car bag will look. And this is in this story said this is our old name but anyway so we're gonna go by level one to level three i mean to level five and the threat system comes from our game which is like a um in our games you have police that's a you in our game our bigger game and instead of like five stars you go with threat levels so that's where it you know ties into with each other so once per turn, if you have a threat level in your hand, you're able to play it under your your leader. So I'm going to draw cards. When you when if you go first, you draw five. If you go second, you draw six. So I'm going to say I go first, right? So any cards that you see with green, so cards like this, I'm able to play. So any cards with green, I'm able to play because I have threat level um, one. So these are threat level one. You just go by safe. This is safe. So safe, uh, Euclid, Scatter, Thermal, and I don't know if I say it, but Polyon. Yeah, Polyon. So you can just remember that. So, so just make the names. Um, only, only can play one threat level per turn. So and you can only play up. So you can't play down. You can only play up. So you can't skip levels either. So you have to go from one, two, three, four, and five. At the five, then the game is basically you can just do what you want then. So what if you have these cards in your hand or you have a threat level that's too high or you just have you just want to um get rid of a threat card level in your, in your hand we added this this part of the system so you'll never basically be stuck with these things in your hand just a bunch of resources like land and magic to gather you won't be stuck and stuff like you so you're able to do something regardless so what you can do is you can discard the, the um the threat level and then you can draw your card and then you see you got some else so now if i did this right here in this turn i'll be able to play hell's calling and what hell's calling does is make me take three damage i take three damage to my leader i add a demon from my deck which is when it says add from your deck you just go in there so i'll add a demon from my deck i'll go with uh problems uh problem starter or problem maker which is a demon show your opponent and then you add it to your deck with your hand partner so make sure you shuffle then the problem uh, maker doesn't have a threat level so when the card doesn't have a threat level you can just play it without um having a threat level at all so you can just play it for free but the thing about it is um i can't play this because this is a threat level two which is right here and um when it comes to playing uh on units you want to remember two 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 terms calling or call or and, uh, and deploy or deployment or deployed or the three deployment deploy and deploy so when you call you can only call once per turn so you can call once per turn but a card can be deployed um no matter no matter how many times and all the based on the, the ability of a card uh, or a, a, a unit or the use of a, a resource which these are resources these are resources um this is a support card which again this in a second um so if a support card a resource or a unit's ability allows you to deploy uh, itself or another card another unit or whatever case may be then you'd be able to deploy it multiple times so you don't have a you don't actually have and you know like a number of times you can actually deploy so and I, add, I added those two things and then now i will be able to choose which lane i'm going to put in right so this is called the laning phase basically so I would choose you could put it into defense, right? Just to protect your uh protect your unit. 
if units if you play units in the defense zones you can't attack with them that turn but if you play them in the quick zone they'll be able to attack so immediately as soon as you play them out there they attack even if you go first so if i go first i play a unit in, in this right here and then i'm able to attack immediately um so that's why they call quick zones so like a magic gathering rush um or swift or um first i think it's called rush yeah, rush and magic gathering. This is basically these zones that give your units that. So you want to basically always make sure you be strategic on where you place your your, your unit placement is at because it's very important. Um, if you do place a unit inside of the defense zones, right, uh, um, the enemy has to always attack the defense zones. So if the defense zones are empty then units will be able to attack even if um if they even if you have a unit inside of the quick zone if there's no units in the defense zone the units in their quick zone and in their defense zone is able to attack you directly um from from your defense because you have nothing there um remember um uh, leaders are able to attack units but units i mean leaders aren't able to attack leaders remember that okay so if you know if that's just the landing phase kind of confuse you you just want to make sure you just rewind us and understand it all right um next next you could go to support cards which we want to bring them back to the leaders go to over here so it's, it's actually in this game you want to place it in here um the leader zone is right here and the support zone so support cards can be played from your hand as much as you can um as much as you want as long as you have the condition for the card so if it says you can't you, you have to do something or something has to happen for this card to be used then um you can't use it and you just have to wait until the condition happens but for example if it's a unit on their side of the field and shocking results what shocking results does if this card was played on your enemy's turn you draw a card and then you be able to destroy a unit and if you uh if this card was played on your turn discard a card and you destroy a unit um and destroy one card your enemy controls so this is basically this is very very good card um you know i play only one of us for some reason i should play two but um if i wanted to play it on my turn i would be able to discard a card and then um i would discard a card and then i'll be able to destroy one card it doesn't matter what card it is i can destroy one card it don't have to be just a unit so if i wanted to do that but let's just say um so this uh, also support cards allow me to interact with my um uh with my opponent so if my opponent is doing something so if he got a support card or he has an urgent which we'll get into that in a second as an urgent or a support card i'm able to then respond with my support cards now urgents are cards like this they have urgent on it so they the resources with urgent on them so not all resources has urgent like the, the, the threat levels doesn't have urgent on them and if you go here this doesn't have urgent on it and because they can't play as fast as a support card so remember that that urgents can play as a support card and you can also play urgents on your on your opponent's turn so um so that's a good thing too um but you can only do it once per turn on once on your turn um so which follows the, the the rule of the support zone because if you set this down then you're able to play this on your opponent's turn but you're only able to play one support card on your opponent's turn uh, you don't have to set um urgent cards on, on face down to play it on your opponent's turn you can just play it from your hand so you don't have to play um this you can't actually set down resource cards so you can't set resource cards um to keep them in your hand and then um if your opponent does something on their turn and let's say like this card says negate the ability of a card that allows a player to draw a card or add a card from their deck so when it's on their turn and they want they draw a card or do something add a card to their deck i just play um uh, slash at a morning star and then it's negated what negate mean is basically it just never happens it doesn't work it doesn't go through um it means you know if they have to pay a cost it's the cost still gets um paid and they still like you know they just still lose everything um but yeah so um support cards remember you, if you place the face down you can use it on your turn if you want to that same turn you place the face down which would just be wasting your time um but you when you come when you place something face down a support card face down you want to make sure you use that on your opponent's turn um if that's what your plan is to do um then you have uh location cards so location cards um it's basically the locations right and location cards some of them this one has a because it has a pay three damage i, I take the damage so that's why it's um free 
but some locations do have uh, threat levels on them and you basically follow the requirements for that but since this one is free i'm able to play it down some of them are free as well but they all do something that helps um, the deck that you're playing with um do more things with each other um and then you have k lines now k lines are very powerful creatures there's multiple versions of them um there are more coming soon so k lines all have conditions so you just basically have to read the conditions on them and then when they come out they normally sometimes they can be a game winning card so when you follow the conditions um for example with thor um what he does is this he can only be called um by sending two lightning types you, uh, you control with two different threat levels um to the graveyard um when called you can remove uh a lightning unit from your graveyard um from play for each card removed this way this uh that um that will move this way destroy a card on the field and then deal two damage to a leader or a unit so he does a, he does a lot so if you have multiple lightning um uh, units inside of the graveyard you can remove all of them and you can do uh two times how many are in there and if you just uh, if you're just using his ability for him to come out you automatically get to um two uses of his ability so it's pretty powerful cards they all do powerful things um you have the hang king um with the what the hang king does is uh when you have seven uh, this one doesn't have the king king in it i actually put the hang king here um, what the Hank King does is, uh, when you have seven or less uh, life, he you get to actually uh, chaos summon him on your turn. You can only do it on your turn, though. You can only chaos summon him on your turn unless something says you can do it on your opponent's turn. Um, but Hank King allows you to play him um, in the K line zone. But to play him, you have to have seven or less life, um, and then you remove your hand from play. So when you remove your hand from play. You remove, you pair all your cards here and it removes them. And then he comes out. And then what happens after that is if a, I think an ability or a call. So I think it's even an ability or a call or he, he negates a support card or a resource. But I think he used it not, okay, I think it's an ability and a use. Use means if you use a card. So for example, um, did not like this card uh this so if i use card use support so if you use support or resources i could just said that to make more sense if i use a resource which is not these um not placing threat levels though or using their discard ability that that doesn't that's not called into using it so if i use a support card if i use the ability of a support card or use the um the ability of a resource card then when it says negate the use of something that was that's what that means so and that's and that's what the Hank King does. And then once he, after he negates it, he comes back in a defense zone. So he's pretty good. So he's really really good. He, he's a he's a seven ten. So he has seven ten. He can turn the, he can turn the ties of a game. Uh, so you can be losing and you play him, and then you can become you can come right back. So that's what the K lines are for. The K lines is to able to, to basically make the where the game can just turn around completely. You can be losing at one moment use the k line if you if you had the conditions for it and then you can completely turn around the game and you just would never know what the hell happened to you when you lose you know you, you know you'd be like i thought i was winning and then the k line will come out and you can completely lose it's multiple versions of them we're working on adding more um and that's basically the game that's literally the game so uh we will be doing play having play tests and then you'll see we'll be posting up videos um you have the artifact zones we play artifacts that's not attachments over there and artifacts that do some different things and stuff the remove from play zones cards that can't that don't go to the graveyard you can still some some decks do allow you to interact with the remove from play zone um but you don't have to worry about that the graveyard obviously the graveyard a lot the, the game is basically plays off in the graveyard um and going into bad one let's get to creatures and show you how damage works so we'll use Elemental Dragon. We'll use Sun the Curious. Um, we we'll use Bahamut Egg. So here's how this works. All right, maybe get my way. When it comes to attacking, when it when the when the leader attacks, 
the leader attacks and you basically go off on the leader attacks the the enemy the unit doesn't attack back they don't attack each other but that's only when a unit a leader attacks a unit but when the unit attack a leader um the leader don't attack back so when it comes to leaders attacking um or, or combat when leaders combat the the defending doesn't attack back but when it comes to units that combat with each other they both attack each other and defend from each other all right so i want to make sure you understand that so right now um sunday carriers has one defense trevor has one attack so that is the same because if they're equal then that means sun the carriers is defeated sun the carriers is defeated but if trevor attacked um elemental spirit frost dragon nothing would happen you don't lose any life you don't do anything um you just nothing happens because um elemental uh, frost dragon um has a higher defense than trevor's attack so um when both have the same so uh, just the same um let's see let's see i don't have a two two in here do i let's see two 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 three three where is sophia or sophia Oh, I got here. There she go. So, if Sophia is a, a um, combating with Sunday Curious or Sarah Sunday Curious is attacking Sophia, uh, they both die because sun attack is higher um uh, it's it's equal to um sophia and sophia attack is, is higher than um sun's so that's the thing so if the attack is higher than the defense so if it's equal or higher than the defense then the defending unit is dead um but if the defending unit has attack that's equal to or higher than the defense of the attacking unit then the unit is dead on the attacking side as well so both they kill each other um but let's just say that a unit um that's attacking is weaker that has, has a weaker attack than the defending unit then the defended unit survives doesn't die um and if the defending unit has a lower attack than the hp what the the defense of um the attacking unit then the attacking unit doesn't die either um so they just cancel each other out and nothing happens but if the attacking unit has the defense i mean um if it's attacks and it has the equal um the defense is equal to the attack as well then the defense is, you know basically the defendant is defeated all right so that is how combat and then again once your um your leader reaches zero through the hair you lose the game so um it's kind of self-explanatory really self-explanatory um after like a few games you you kind of get to like you, you get the understanding of it it's really a fast learning curve um it's not it's not no difficult stuff like that it's pretty diff pretty self-explanatory um so watch the video again if you need to get an understanding or rewind it and you'll get an understanding of it um i'm gonna have to play some games with some of my community members to show you guys uh how the game works so what i want to do now is take you over to the lore book so you can see and how you can get to know some of the creatures some of the units some of the people that's going to be inside of the game now in the lore book this will be very important for you guys to get to know the characters stuff like that so um right now we're working on just just a little bit right now um yeah, here uh this is only the first one but it'll be we have a lot of cards so we have to add them all on here but right now this is amira um basically go over the story about them so just go ahead you'll be you'll have access to come here and read a get a full story on them and everything about it and then it tells you the main card um you uh, know if they if, if they have a card in the game which most of them do it was every card everything that you will see in here will have a card and it'll basically explain what the card does explain what the card does um like the main card of if they have a deck the main card of the deck um like the biggest card of it so like this right here is the engine of this deck of the iron rod deck 
and then basically tells you right here what the image of the car is basically explaining so it basically gives you like a flavor text of what it is um because the 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 use of the, uh, the ability of the card is right here so don't have you don't have nowhere to put the flavor text of it and it's basically just go over flavor text explaining what has happened in, in the picture um and then it also tells you the relationship of um I'm and Ra and everyone has relationship with um, that's a part of the universe and as you can see here's Trevor um, and we're going to update Trevor his photo and everything and basically give you this full story of Trevor same thing goes into what happened with I'm and Ra all that type of stuff like that and then all the people that Trevor has interacted with and have a relationship with all this right here um, we're still working on this this is a very huge project um, for you guys to deep dive inside of the um, inside of the lore. So if you read Amin Ra's lore, you'll see that Amin Ra also is connected with Javier as well, which is um, Javier is the leader of the Blacklist uh, um, Black Market organization. Um, so um, this is definitely something cool to check out right here. And as you can see, Trevor is also connected to I mean, uh, connected to uh warren wong which is trevor's brother and javier is also connected to them too so everybody shows how people are connected with each other it has family trees um all of the creatures you'll find out about all the creatures inside of the universe every single thing will be right here for you guys every card that you want to know will be right here you guys will be able to see any and everything um and also we're going to try to see if we can add a marketplace where you guys can buy and sell your cards um, there's you no know, physical copies, um, you know, on the digital side, you'll be able to sell inside of the game, so you don't have to worry about that. But on the physical side, we'll have a physical buying and selling um, system for you guys to be able to do so. All right, so um, I'm actually going to work on that immediately, to be honest with you. You guys be able to buy and sell cards on there, um, sell the physical cards, because that's what we're working on right now is the physical cards, getting you guys a part of that, getting you guys inside of the supply and the demand um education when it comes to how these cards can be very viable um and like which cards is good and what cards is not so I'm, as an, an ex pro player of card games of Yu Gi Oh, um definitely gonna put you guys on and into into the space of trading card games um if you're not a trading card gamer i promise you um just hanging out with myself um when it comes to this type of stuff i'll get you addicted to this stuff and when it comes to even on the financial side because the financial side is super cool when it comes to trading card games um and like you know like the gotcha stuff um you know not no web3 bullshit i'm talking about like actual collection um actual playing a game for tournaments and 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 trading and selling cards due to the fact that i need this um here so i need to sell this to be able to get this and profit and how to profit and not to lose and stuff like that when and to buy uh cards so you guys are definitely I want to learn that um, from me as well. All right, so um, more of the stuff is coming. Uh, we're still developing. I'm actually developing this with the community as well. Uh, so this is going to be a fun project for all of us. Thank you for watching. I'm pretty tired, as you guys can see.